GPD has just released a video showing off that they are indeed working on the newest GPD Win 5, which features AMD's absolutely newest monstrous APU, AMD Strix Halo. And in it, they are using the latest AI Max Plus 395 version, the tippity top version. What's interesting in the video that they show is that it is running at around 60 watt and the temperature of it is at 65 degrees Celsius. Now we can't hear the fans. So we don't know how loud it is in this respect, but it's at running at 65 degrees Celsius. So we still have headroom to push that package even further and Strix Halo can honestly take a lot more power than that. So it remains to be seen how far we can actually push this device. Now there were some concerns because it looks a lot like the GPD Win 4 and from a lot of people's concerns if it wasn't the GPD Win 4 it would have a six inch screen. Now in this video we're going to be showing all of the tech specs of the device as far as we know it and we'll give some caveats on what is tentative still so Bear in mind with that. But the good news is that the display that is on the GPD Win 5 is just like the GPD Win Mini. It is a 7 inch, 120 hertz VRR display. So that is just super awesome because the display on this is low power and excellent. So, with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the tech specs and try to go through and understand what that brings us to the table. So starting off, we're going to be taking a look at the basic information. The product name is obviously the GPD Win 5. The tentative launch date is October of this year, so pretty soon. Now for the display, which a lot of people were concerned about, let's jump straight into that. The display is a 120 hertz eSports monitor with AMD FreeSync premium support, 6 millisecond response time, and 100% of the sRGB wide color gamut. It is 10-point touch control, the sixth generation of Corning Glass. 500 nit brightness, 7 inches, 120 hertz, 16 by 9, and a 1080p panel. So that is the panel, which I think is actually excellent news. It's a fantastic panel. It is also at 7 inches, the absolute minimum that I am looking to use on a handheld at this point. I have now since graduated to 8 inches as my preferred, especially on the Switch 2. It is like a really great balance of size and screen size in terms of like handheld size, right? Like holding it. I feel like that is a great... Um, area seven inches though is still really good and the absolute minimum of where we are so i'm glad it's not six inches and it is seven inches and it's just a fantastic panel so that's great news now for the next part this is what's really actually interesting because it tells us there's two different models of the gpd win 5 there is going to be the tippity top end which is the amd ryzen ai max plus 395 version which has 16 cpus and 32 threads and then there is the amd ryzen ai max 385, which has eight CPU cores and 16 threads. Now, for both of these, the main similarity between them is that they both feature the same 256-bit memory controller on these chips. So we're going to get the same bandwidth that we're going to be able to deliver to those GPUs. Now, the AI Max Plus 395 has 40 CUs, and the AI Max 385 has 32 CUs. I have not yet tested the AI Max 385 yet, so I'm very interested to see where this kind of scales in so far as how it does on lower power. The good news is that the AI Max Plus 395 version already can run at super low power. I've done many videos on this and typically the package is around 7 watt needed and especially on the Asus uh, version that I had, I was getting around 8 watt total because the fan was off and nothing else was needed to run. So it can actually run at super low power. It remains to be seen how the fan is going to scale and how this all works when we're at super low power for the GPU Win 5. I'll have more information when I hope Hopefully get a review unit for the GPD Win 5. So I'll be able to talk more about that in just a second. We don't yet know the price difference between these two models. Now, to give you an idea, the 395 for Asus went up to like $2,200 or $2,000. It was pretty expensive. But then we also saw mini PCs with the 395 being around $1,500. So do anticipate the 395 version to be somewhere in that realm of $1,500. I have no idea what the price is. This is speculation on my part. But anticipate anywhere between $1,500 and $2,200 is somewhere in that gap. For the 385, I don't really know what the price is going to be. So I don't know what the price disparity is. And I also don't know what the performance difference is between those and if it makes any sense. For storage, there are three different options that GPD will be selling. There is a 32 gig, 64 gig, and 128 gigabyte model configuration. And there doesn't seem to be any differentiation between the 395 or the 385. So you can get those memory configurations in either one of those. Now, it shows it being LPDDR5X 8000 mega transfers and with quad channel memory. Now, the important thing to note here is that there are two memory controllers on Strix Halo. So we are getting 256 bit wide memory, which is very important because that is what is going to feed those GPUs. For the 395, it is 40 CUs. And for the 385, it's 32 CUs. It remains to be seen again how power is going to be distributed across all these things. So I'm very, very interested in the 385 version. 
We also have a one time M2 socket three, which is a mini SD. There's like a, a specific mini Bywin SSD that you can use on this as secondary storage. And then the main one is a 2280 NDME slot, which is PCI four by four, uh, four PCI, PCI lanes. They will sell it in one, two and four terabyte configurations. For the audio system, there is a built-in audio chipset equipped with two watt super linear speakers, both headphones and built-in speaker support, DTS-X Ultra Audio Technology, simulating physical 7.1 channel surround sound and dual integrated microphones. For Wi-Fi, we have Wi-Fi 6E supported from the Intel AX210 chipset. This is actually a fantastic chipset that I've used often, and it's been a standard in a lot of different handhelds. I don't think anyone's had a problem with it. It features Bluetooth 5.3 as well. For IO ports, we have one USB 4 supporting PD fast charging protocol on display 2.1 with 100 watt PD charging and DP output to 8K. We also have one USB 3.2 Gen Type C. Uh, featuring DisplayPort 2.1, does not support charging. It has also another output for DisplayPort. We have one DC port, so I guess a barrel jack that is going to be on this, that is for 180 watt charging. This is the primary charging port. There is that one X mini SSD slot that we talked about before. And then there is one USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A slot. So there is going to be a one full USB A slot. For micro SD slot, it is the SD 3.0 protocol, UHS-1, Class B30. So typically the max specs that you can get from a micro SD, but it, it does not look to be micro SD Express. So it is the a traditional micro SD, which I think is just fine. For IO device, there's the power switch, the power button with RGB lighting and a fingerprint scanner. So that is included. Indicator lamp, charging, operating standby, indicator light, mouse, mouse one, right thumbstick simulates the gamepad mouse, mouse two is optical. So, all right, so there's two different mice. One is from the emulated control, emulated mouse through the switch that GPD always has on the devices. So it'll switch over to mouse mode when you're using the analog sticks, or you can use a little, the little thumb pad that is on the GPD Win 5 as a, 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 a always on mouse. For the gamepad, we have capacitive analog sticks, ultra high precision and sensitivity, 8,000 hertz sampling rate, 2,000 hertz reporting rate, 4,000 step resolution capable of detecting angle shifts as small as 0 0.09 degrees, featuring a sunk design with L3R3 button support for depressible buttons, limit ring made of POM material providing superior wear resistance and durability, eliminating wear debris guide ring, constructed with a metal ring featuring ultra low coefficient of friction, less than 0 0.1, delivering significantly smoother operation. The device features a unified D-pad, silicon rubber ABXY buttons with dual layer silk screened PlayStation symbols, along with the back button, SAR key, and Xbox style menu key. Now, this is the interesting part. So for the battery, how they are doing this is it is external, but it can be attached to the GPD Win 5. So there's going to be like a backpack type of thing that clips on to the GPD Win 5. For the battery type, it is external removal. A polymer lithium ion battery dual mode there's a backpack backpack mountable plus wire charging available for separate purchase the battery capacity on this external battery pack is 80 watt hour the battery net weight is not listed yet because that is to be determined the battery life continuous operation is two hours moderate three to four hours light operation duty is six hours and this is generally uh in line with what we should expect uh, i have shown amd strict halo 395 on the asus tablet getting uh far more because i can get it down to about eight and nine watt total system power so that is i think it was on seven to eight hours that i got out of that so for like indie games you should be able to achieve that but it remains to be seen we'll have to wait and see how this all uh turns out dc power this is what i assume is going to be that that barrel jack or something like a barrel jack is 180 watt dedicated dc power and then the DC power cord is configurable, regional plug, so you can get all the different standards for all the different regions. And the size of the battery, I guess the battery pack, is 111 millimeters by 111 meters by 18 millimeters. Uh, the weight is also to be determined, so they're not revealing that just yet. And the size of the device, the GPD Win 5, the GPD Win 5 itself, is 266, 267 millimeters, 112 millimeters by 24 millimeters. The shell material is LG Dow 121H impact resistant aviation ABS synthetic resin UL94 V0 fire retardant grid. The shell color is only in black and thermal design is active cooling solution with dual fan plus quad heat pump configuration. And we already saw from the video that it was 
capable of handling 60 watts, no problem, because we're getting around 66 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then for accessories, there is the GB15, the external battery, battery to host dedicated connector. So this is going to be some thin line connector that connects the, the battery backpack pack back to the device. There is a DC power adapter, a DC power cable, a warranty card, and a product manual, manual. And then we have the global warranty device one year, charger one year, and then the rest of the information from GPD. So that is the complete tech specs that we have right now for the GPD-1.5. There are two configurations with lots of different memory configurations and storage configurations, but effectively there is the tippity-top Super Max 395 Plus version, and then the 385 version with eight core CPU and 32 CUs. Depending on the price and how the performance works out on both of these, it remains to be seen how well this works. Hopefully I'll be able to get review units of both. That would be awesome because then I'd be able to properly compare them and give you better information. Uh, so that is what we're looking at for the tech specs of the GPD Win 5. This is going to be the most monstrous handheld there is. We also have to see how well this backpack works on the device. I am glad that it is using that 7-inch display as a minimum because it is the minimum size that I would like. But otherwise, uh, 1080p, 120 hertz of VRR, these are things that I have grown accustomed to to actually really liking. So I'm glad that we have that, and it is a fantastic screen. So that's it. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.